Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you use a photo editor such as Lightroom, Capture One, On One Photo Raw, Luminar, or any of those types of applications, you probably take one thing for granted. That is, those are non-destructive editors. All the edits you do to those aren't really being applied to the actual image. So it's really easy to undo anything you did. and It's easy to revert back to the original unedited file. One thing you'll find if you start using Photoshop is Photoshop isn't as unforgiving. There are some things that you'll be doing in Photoshop that are destructive. In today's video, I want to talk about a few of those destructive things in Photoshop and workarounds you could apply so that you're not working destructively in Photoshop. Now, for example, I have this image here. It's opened in Photoshop. And let's just say I want to add a filter to it. So I'm going to go up to filter. And this applies if you're using a plugin as well. So let's, for this instance though, I want to add some blur. So I'll go to blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to add a ridiculous amount of blur to this. All right, and click OK. All right, I added all this blur. Well, uh, I accidentally did that. I wasn't paying attention. I accidentally hit the slider. I want to undo that. So if I go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I take the slider all the way down to 0.1, you'll see it's not undoing it. It's no way to undo it as far as that is concerned. So that got kind of baked in. But Light, uh, Photoshop, excuse me, does remember the last 50 things you did. So you could undo those by going up to this tab, History tab. Now, if you don't have the History tab here, go up to Window and go down to History. Make sure there's a check mark next to History. Go to the History tab, and you could just go back to the step before the blur was added. It keeps track of the last 50 steps you've done by default. Now, you can change that. You could go to Photoshop Preferences. On a Mac, it's under the Photoshop menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. And specifically, you want to go down to Performance. And over here, you'll see History States. By default, it will have 50. Open that up, you could go up to 1,000. Now, of course, if you go up to 1,000, it's going to use more computer resources, and it may make your computer run slowly. You may not want to do that. You may want to use less than 50, actually, if your computer is bogging down a lot. Uh, but 50 usually works for me, so I'm just going to cancel out of this so it stays at 50. So you have that, but that isn't foolproof either. Let me show you. I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We'll still add that ridiculous amount of blur, and I'm going to save this file. I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to go down to Save. And once it's saved, it's saved. I'm going to close this down. All right, now I'm going to open it up again right here. And when I open that up again, if I go up to that history tab, you'll see that it lost the history. So when you save an image, it wipes out the history. So you won't be able to undo anything you did. Now there are workarounds. Let me get rid of this one. I have actually uh, the image right here, a copy of that image. So there are workarounds. Workaround number one is just duplicate the background layer as soon as you open an image up and do Photoshop. So hit Command or Control J on your computer. You'll notice, or you've probably noticed, that many of us that teach Photoshop, uh, one of the first things we do when we're doing anything in Photoshop, we duplicate the background layer. Most often we don't say why. Well, this is why. I could do whatever I want to this layer, and if I want to undo it, and let's say it's beyond history, or I save the image and it's not in history, I could just throw that layer out down here in this little garbage can, just drag it down there, and I'm right back to the original background layer that didn't have anything done to it. So that's why we do that. Now, one thing you may have been you know, thinking, when I did that Gaussian blur, I wasn't able to go back in and readjust it. Well, you will be able to do that if you make this layer a special type of layer. You want to make it a smart layer, most often called a smart object. Uh, to do that, just right click on it and you could go to convert to smart object. Another way to do that is just go up to that filter menu and convert for smart filters. It's the same thing. You're making that layer a smart object. And when you do that, you'll know it's a smart object because they have a little square in the corner. Now, if I go up to filter and down to blur 
and over to Gaussian Blur, and I add that ridiculous amount of blur and click OK, you'll notice that instead of just being there all by itself blurred, it now has a layer mask and it has the words Gaussian Blur. So I could readjust this by just double clicking on the words Gaussian Blur and then I could come back in and readjust it to something a little more acceptable. Like that, let's say, and click OK. Now this is nice because it comes with a mask. So if I want to totally remove the blur from parts of the image, click on the mask, get a brush, Make sure you're painting in black and then paint on the image. And let's say I just want the edges blurred. So I could come in now and do this. And again, because it is a smart object or a smart layer, sometimes called, all the same thing. So don't get too confused. Smart object, smart layer, same thing. I could come back in and readjust any of this. So I kind of just have the edges blurred. I'll double click on the words Gaussian Blur again and maybe I'll just increase the blur even more. I miss spots in here. So I'll leave it high so that I know I, I could come in and get rid of those spots I missed. And then I could come back in and readjust it again. I miss spots over here. I'm missing all kinds of spots. And then I come in and make it a little more acceptable. Something like that. So that's kind of a workaround to how we could work with um, making sure we're working non-destructively in Photoshop. Now, if I save this as either a PSD file or a TIFF file, these layers will be preserved. So I could reopen it and I could come back in and readjust the Gaussian blur, or I could delete both of those or that top layer and just have the original background layer there. So I'll be able to do that. So just make sure you save it as a TIFF or a PSD. PSD files are smaller. They load faster and they save quicker, but TIFF files, although they're larger and they take longer to save and longer to open, they tend to be more compatible with other applications. So if you tend to take that, that TIFF file and open it up into something else, it probably would work better than a PSD file. Even Lightroom recommends that you use TIFF files, even though a PSD file is a Photoshop file or a, an Adobe file is what I'm trying to say. You would think that Lightroom being an Adobe product would want you to use Adobe files, but um, actually they recommend you use TIFF. So that's what I use most often is TIFF files. Now, as far as Lightroom is concerned, let's talk about that for a moment. Let's go to Lightroom. Here's that original raw file right here. But let's go to a different one. Whole new set of issues arrive when you're using, using Photoshop with Lightroom. Uh, let's just send this image over into Photoshop. Now it is a raw file. I'm going to right click right in it. I'm going to go to into edit in and over to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2022. Now you'll notice it's not asking me if I want to edit, send the original file, send a copy or send a copy with Lightroom adjustments. It just sent the raw file over. At least it appears that it sent the raw file over. If you look over here, um, Let's get rid of that original, that one. Let's get rid of this. That was that one we were working on, don't save. All right, we're back here. It says .nef, this is the raw file, right? Well, not really. Um, Lightroom doesn't send over raw files when you're working with plugins or even with Photoshop. It will send either a TIFF or a PSD and you could control that in Lightroom Preferences. Let's go back to Lightroom and go to Lightroom Preferences. On a Mac, it's under Lightroom Classic menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. In Preferences, third tab from the left, External Editing, at the top, it says Edit in Adobe Photoshop, and you have the option of a TIFF or a PSD. I mentioned I prefer TIFFs, and even Adobe recommends TIFFs. Let's go to PSD, and you can see here it says Use 16-bit Pro Photo RGB, blah, blah, blah. It says PSD can be less efficient than TIFF with respect to metadata updates. When saving from Photoshop, please be sure that you have Maximize Compatibility option in Photoshop Failure to do so will result in images that cannot be read by Lightroom. So you have to make sure that there is a uh, setting in Photoshop uh, set a specific way so that that PSD will be read by Lightroom. I just use TIFF. It's up to you though. I mean, I know people that use PSDs fine and PSDs are fine and they are smaller. So if you do have a uh, limited drive space, you may prefer PSDs compared to TIFF. So even though it says here on this tab, it's a .nef file. This is really a .tiff file, and I'll show you. Let's do something to it. Let's go up to Edit and replace the sky. 
And whatever the default sky I happened to use last time, it was a Shura AccuDrone sky. Yes, it was, because I love AccuDrone skies. I'll have a link to them in the description below this video. I think they're the best third-party skies available. Also, have a discount code. I'll have that all in the description below this video. Now, anyway, let's just keep that sky. With this specific tool, you have the option to output it to a duplicate layer. You also have the option to just use new layers. Either one is fine. What either one will do, it will leave your background layer as is and won't do anything to it. So that if you want to undo what you did, you always could drop back to that background layer and you'll be right back where you started. Um, so either one is fine. I prefer duplicate layer. I'll just go with OK with that. And you can see there's the duplicate layer. Now there's their sky. If I don't like this, I could just throw it out. Throw it down here in the garbage can and I'm right back where I started. So that's why we didn't have to hit Command or Control J right at the beginning because this created a duplicate layer all by itself. So some of the functionality in Photoshop will preserve the background layer, but some doesn't. So you really have to use Photoshop and get to know what does, and what will and what won't preserve your background layer. In this case, this preserved the background layer. I was good. Another thing that won't affect any of the layers below it or won't like hurt them is any of the adjustment layers. Let's add a photo filter to this. And let's add a warming filter and let's do something crazy like 71, right? So we added this adjustment layer. If I don't like it, just throw it out. And I still have the background layer. I still have both layers. If I don't, I want to, you know, revert back and I'm, I'm past my history number. I could just, or I saved it as a TIFF or PSD and I reopen it and history is wiped out and I want to start over, just throw those top two layers out and I could start over. Also, um, I could readjust adjustment layers. So just double click on this part on the left and I could come in and readjust this to anything I want. But let's leave it real high. We're working in Lightroom, right? So let's save this and go back to Lightroom and see what is preserved, what is non-destructive once we're back in Lightroom. Let's um, go up to File and go to Save. Now, because this is a TIFF file, even though it says dot, now it's saying TIFF. Ah, look at that. So now, because it is a TIFF file, it does take longer to save uh, than a PSD would. So you can see it's taken a while to save. Once it saves, we'll close down Photoshop and then we'll look at it in Lightroom and I'll show you what what is destructive and not destructive from that point forward. So I'm going to close down Photoshop now. Use keyboard shortcut on my Mac Command Q. All right, here's that image. It's the TIFF file. Remember I mentioned be a TIFF file? There's the original RAW file. Now I want to come back in and readjust this. I made it way too warm. So I need to open it back up into Photoshop. Let's go right click on it and go to edit in. Remember the RAW file? It just opened the RAW file directly up into Photoshop because this is not a RAW file you now get this dialog box. You could edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments, you could edit a copy, or you could edit the original. If you want to go back into Photoshop and re-edit one of the layers you previously did in Photoshop, you have to either edit the original or edit a copy. If you do the top one, it's going to give you a flattened image. Let me show you. I'm gonna to go to Edit Original, and it will take this TIFF file and open it up into Photoshop. And you'll see my layers are intact. I could come back in and readjust this. So let's make it way too low this time. All right. And then we'll save this again. File, save, right? And now it's going to take a while to save. You can see there's a progress bar in the lower left-hand corner as well. Um, notice the last, like, usually, like, 1% or 2% take really long time to save. I'm not really sure why. But... Um, it's always been that way. Photoshop has always done that. The last one or two percent of the file take a long time to save. All right, well, undo that. We're back into Lightroom. Oh, look, now it did it. All right, I want to, oh, I need it a little warmer. So I'm going to right click right on it. I'm going to go to Edit In, go to Adobe Photoshop, but this time I'm going to do Edit a Copy. And we'll click Edit. So now it's going to make a fourth copy down here in the film strip. It's so, so it's making another TIFF file. And it's going to open that TIFF file into Photoshop. And you'll see that our layer structure is preserved and the settings that we did. And this would apply to if we had a smart object or a smart layer and a smart filter done to that layer, we'd be able to go back in and readjust 
that smart object or smart layer or smart filter as well. So it does take a while to open. It is a TIFF file, as I mentioned. So you may prefer to use PSDs. As long as the compatibility is all set, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. There it is. There's Everything's preserved. I could double click now on this adjustment layer and I could go in and make this more like acceptable. Let's say, let's say 30. Okay. I like that. Let's save it again. Sometimes what I do, cause I'm kind of lazy instead of going to save or, or using even the key keyboard shortcut on my Mac command S I'll just quit Photoshop. So I'll use the keyboard shortcut command Q. So I'll go to command Q and it's going to ask me, do you want to save it? And I'll click save here. So then what it will do now is it will save it. There's the progress bar in the lower left-hand corner. And once it saves it, it will close down Photoshop and I'll be in Lightroom. And that's usually what I do because it just saves a couple of keyboard presses and clicks of the mouse. And you'll notice it will now be properly adjusted, let's say. Let's call this properly adjusted. But we have this extra image now, right? There, or is it there? This is it. All right. Now, finally, let's right click on it again, go down to edit in Photoshop. And instead let's go edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. Even though I didn't do any Lightroom adjustments, let's pretend I did or didn't, it doesn't matter and click edit. So it's going to make a fourth copy of this image. It's going to be the fifth image in the film strip and it's in here, but look on the right, the layers are flattened. So I can't go back in and re-edit that, um, photo filter adjustment layer that I did. So that is one thing you need to be aware of. So that's just some of the things that are kind of destructive in Photoshop, but there are workarounds for them. So just remember those workarounds and you'll be fine. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>